Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that you seek us and that your love is like such an amazing wildfire that we can't even control. You love us so incredibly much. I pray that today you would help us to hear your word in a new and fresh way. You would open our ears and our hearts to what you have to tell us today. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Well, it's so good to see all of you here today. My name is Pastor Sam. And I'm Megan Skelton. I'm so happy you were all here. I know we only took like a week off. Um, one Sunday we didn't have generations, but it just feels like home again. Everyone is here. So good morning. I'm so excited to worship with you today. For Advent, we took a break. We um, are now going back to our journey through the Bible, and we're going to re- hear about Daniel, all right? And so there was something kind of crazy that happened to Daniel. We're going to learn how he served God, but there's a picture on the screen I want you to take a look at. There's a mystery message on that wall. Do you see those words? Mene, mene, tekel, parson. Thank you, because I'm like, I don't even know how to say those words. So it's a mystery message. As we get started today, we're going to hear more about those words, what they actually mean. But when we get started, I would love for you to greet the people around you, welcome them, and maybe give us your best guess. What do you think those words mean? What do you think that mystery message is trying to say? Good morning. Hello. As we get started this morning, I want to invite you all to return to your seats. We have a very special opportunity to begin our service this morning with baptism. But before we do that, we remember our own baptisms. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. We're welcoming this morning Jackson and Harper into the family of God, so I want to invite the baptismal family to come forward as we get to celebrate this awesome sacrament this morning where God welcomes us not only into the family of St. Luke's but into the family of God. <laughs> Jesus says in the last chapter of Matthew, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me, therefore go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. In the last chapter of Mark, our Lord promises whoever believes and is baptized will be saved. And the Apostle Peter has written, baptism now saves you. The Word of God also teaches that we are all conceived and born sinful. We would be lost forever unless delivered from sin, death, and the condemnation of the devil through the waters of baptism. Jesus washes away our sin, and we are reborn as his brothers and sisters. Harper, receive the sign of the cross both upon your forehead and upon your heart as the, to mark you as one redeemed by Jesus Christ. Jackson, receive the sign of the cross on your forehead and on your heart to mark you as one redeemed. From ancient times, the church has observed the custom of appointing sponsors for those being baptized. And the Evangelical Lutheran Church sponsors are to confess the faith expressed in the Apostles' Creed, we'll confess in a few moments, and taught in the small catechism. They're whenever possible to witness the baptism of those they sponsor, and they are to pray for them, support them in their ongoing instruction and nurture in the Christian faith, 
and encourage them toward the faithful reception of the Lord's Supper. They are at all times to be examples to them of holy life and faith in Christ and love for the neighbor. So I ask you, the sponsors, is it your intention to serve Jackson and Harper as a sponsor in the Christian faith? If so, say yes with the help of God. God enable you to will and to do this faithful and loving work by his grace in you to encourage Jackson and Harper in a growing relationship with the Lord. Amen. Hear the gospel according to St. Mark. They brought young children to Jesus that he might touch them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. But when Jesus saw it, he was greatly displeased and said to them, let the little children come to me and do not forbid them. For of such is the kingdom of God. Assuredly, I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will by no means enter it. And he took them up in his arms, put his hands on them, and blessed them. I invite you all now to join us as we pray the Lord's Prayer together, our family prayer over Jackson and Harper as a blessing to them. We pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to invite you all to, together with the family, confess the faith of the Christian church. The words will be on the screen as I ask you a few questions about what we believe. Do you renounce the devil and all his works and all his ways? I do renounce them. Do you believe in God the Father Almighty? Yes, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son? Yes, I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? Yes, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. How is this child to be named? <laughs> Sometimes we have to come to the kingdom kicking and screaming. <laughs> What's his middle name again? Jackson Burbank. Jackson Burbank Siegel. Jackson Burbank Siegel, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. We'll clean him up, wipe him off a little bit. <laughs> How is this child to be named? Harper Bonnie. Harper, Bonnie, Siegel, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. There you go. The Almighty God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given you the new birth of water and of the Spirit and has forgiven all your sins, may he strengthen you with his grace to life everlasting. Amen. Amen. In holy baptism, God the Father has made Jackson and Harper members of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, and heirs with us of all the treasures of heaven. We receive you in Jesus' name as our brothers and sisters in Christ, that together we might hear his word, receive his gifts, and proclaim the praises of him who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. And we say together, Amen. We welcome you into the family of God here at St. Luke's. We pray together. 
Almighty and merciful God and Father, we thank and praise you that you graciously preserve and enlarge your family and have granted Jackson and Harper the new birth in holy baptism and made them members of your Son and heirs of your heavenly kingdom as they have now become your children. We ask that you would keep them in their baptismal grace, that they may faithfully grow to lead godly lives to praise and honor of your holy name. And finally, with all your saints, obtain the promised inheritance in heaven through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Let's give Jackson and Harper a hand. And now we enter into that time that we have of our service of confessing our own sins. And as we confess our sins, we actually are remembering our baptismal identity that we can come before God by nothing we do, but by everything that he's done for us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his son Jesus Christ to die for you through baptism. He unites you to that death. Therefore, in the place of Christ and by his command, I get to speak his words to you. I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. As a response to God's great gift of forgiveness, we often respond with our offerings. And I want to take a moment just to reflect on some of the ways your offerings are impacting our community around us. And reports are coming in from our Catalyst group leaders about the experiences they've had in this pilot program we're doing where we've given them some funds to go out and serve in their communities. And hear this story from this Catalyst group leader. After they used their gift to support Meals on Wheels and bless shut-ins in the program of Meals on Wheels, this is what their leader said. When we saw the scale of the project we were a part of, we found ourselves overwhelmed with emotion and the realization that despite all the trouble we hear in the news, we could visibly see that there was a place where God's work was being done and making a difference. And we so want to be a part of God's work. This experience actually brought our Catalyst group closer together. So thank you for all of your donations and the gifts that you've given to St. Luke's. At this time, we step into that message and scripture portion of our service. And as Megan alluded to in our introduction, we're kind of getting out of the series we were just in called Home is Where the Heart Is, starting this new series, which is really the old series of going through the history of the people of Israel. So there's going to be a lot of remembering this morning as I ask you to remember back to what we talked about a month ago when the people of Israel were in exile. And we heard that story of Daniel, and some of you might remember the story of Daniel. He had the choice between the bacon and steak that the king was eating or the Brussels sprouts and river water that he was going to eat. And he decided rather than fitting in and eating the king's meal, he was going to be a weirdo in a weird place and eat his Brussels sprouts and asparagus. But he was going to do it to be faithful to God. You see, Daniel's priority was to follow God's law. Daniel, through his life up to this point, before our message today, lived his life being faithful to God and also being opportunistic, which for Daniel means he made the most of the opportunities he had to serve the people around him. And now he's got another message to share with us today. So let's hear our video and see what Daniel's story has to teach us.
King Belshazzar, the ruler of Babylon, had a big feast. A thousand guests came to eat and drink with the king. During the party, King Belshazzar brought out gold and silver containers for his guests to drink from. The containers had been taken from God's temple in Jerusalem. The king was misusing them. While the king and his guests drank, they worshipped their false gods, gods made of gold, silver, bronze, iron, wood, and stone. Suddenly, the feast was interrupted. A hand appeared at the wall, and its fingers began writing a message. The king watched the hand, and he was very afraid. His face was pale, and his legs shook. The king stared at the message on the wall, but he didn't understand what it meant. The king called for the wise men in his kingdom. If anyone can tell me what this message means, I will give him gifts and an important job in my kingdom, he said. The wise men came, but none of them knew what the message meant. King Belshazzar and his guests were upset. Then the queen remembered Daniel. Daniel was wise, so Daniel was called to the palace. Daniel saw the message and understood what it meant. The message was from God. Daniel reminded the king about what happened to his relative, King Nebuchadnezzar. God made King Nebuchadnezzar great, Daniel said. But King Nebuchadnezzar thought too much of himself, so God punished him. King Belshazzar had not learned from Nebuchadnezzar's mistakes. King Belshazzar did not love God. He loved himself the most, and he worshipped false gods. Then Daniel read the message aloud and told the king what the words meant. The words on the wall were Mene, Tekel, and Parson. Mene meant that God had counted the days of the kingdom. The king wasn't going to be king anymore. The next word, Tekel, meant that God had given the king a report card, and he had failed. The word parson meant that Babylon would be split up and taken over by its enemies. That night, God's message came true. King Belshazzar was killed, and a new king named Darius took over Babylon. God humbled the proud king of Babylon by taking away his kingdom. King Jesus willingly humbled himself by dying on the cross for our sin. God raised up Jesus and gave him honor forever. When we humble ourselves and trust in Jesus, God will raise us up to enjoy Jesus in his kingdom forever. So Daniel was faithful and opportunistic. Daniel is one of the masters of conversion in the Old Testament. And this story of Daniel and King Belshazzar, Belshazzar is the only king that Daniel did not convert to the one true faith and the one true God. His father, Nebuchadnezzar, came to believe in the one true God. The king after Belshazzar came to believe in the one true God because Daniel was faithful and opportunistic to deliver God's word. And that word that God sent to King Belshazzar wasn't a great word. Have any of you, how many of you have ever heard the phrase, read the writing on the wall? Okay, most of, most of the adults have heard that phrase. If you've heard that phrase, that actually comes from this story. This is the writing on the wall, right? That human hand comes and writes on the wall. And that's not just me. Even Google confirms that. The writing on the wall isn't good news. It's not good news whenever you hear that phrase, and it's certainly not good news for King Belshazzar. The writing on the wall says, Mene, Mene, your days have been counted, and they've come to an end. It says, Tekel, you, you get your report card, and it shows that according to God's holiness, you're not good enough. And Parson, you're not going to be king anymore, but somebody else is going to be king. For Belshazzar, that news was really, really scary. When Daniel read to him the writing on the wall, he was terrified. And I know 
that we all kind of know the writing on the wall. I don't know what brought you here, but I imagine that one of the reasons you are here today is because you've read the writing on the wall. And you don't need to come here to hear about it, to hear the fact that your days are numbered because the world is really good at reminding us of that, of how fragile our lives are and how at any moment they could be taken. Or, or to be reminded that when we get our report card from a holy, perfect God, we aren't good enough. And we are deserving of judgment. That's what the word tekel means. Or even though we try to organize our lives, even though we try to control things, even though we try to get a handle on what our family's doing and get a mastery over our lives and what happens, Parson, we aren't the kings of our lives. We aren't the queens of our lives. And we know that there are things that are out of our control. You've heard the writing on the wall, and I imagine that the writing on the wall, the words of God, remind us to come here and hear a better writing. You see, the writing on the wall for us, for King Belshazzar, that was the last word he had from God. But for us, we get to hear another word from God. And it's not just the writing on the wall, but the writing on the cross. Right? That's what Christmas is about. It's about God sending his son Jesus into our world so that he can take on the sins of the world. And as Jesus, the word of God, not in just a human hand, but in a human body, walks on this earth, they hang him up on the cross. And in Jesus, the writing on the cross, we hear these words a different way. Mene, mene, your days are numbered, but they meet their end on the cross of Christ. Tekel, your report card isn't good enough, but your punishment is there on the cross of Christ as the word of God hangs there. Parson, you aren't the king of your world, but just read the inscription above the cross of Christ. This is the king of the Jews, and that writing on the cross is writing for us too, as Jesus isn't only the king of the Jews, but he is our king too. God uses the cross, the writing on the cross as his divine eraser to erase the writing on the wall for us. And how does he do that? Well, we saw a little piece of it again today. See, as Jackson and Harper are baptized into the family of God, they're baptized into the community of St. Luke's. One of Jesus' friends, Paul, reminds us that they're also actually baptized into the death of Christ. So that through baptism, our, our lives are united to Christ's life. So that when we talk about death, we're actually talking about what happened on the cross of Christ where we were judged with all of our sins. So that in baptism, we can be raised to new life. And in baptism, God keeps writing. He takes out his book of life that has in it all of the names of those people who believed in Jesus. And today he writes Jackson and Harper. And he's written your name there in the book of life too. As we think about the writing, there are, there are those three writings that matter to us. The writing on the wall that reminds us we need Jesus. The writing on the cross that shows us that God gives himself fully to us. And then the writing in the book that reminds us that we are members of his kingdom. You see, but God doesn't just write his name in that, write our names in the book of life so that we can live life and feel good about ourselves. But he writes our names in the book of life so that like Daniel, we would go live our lives faithful to God's word, and being opportunistic to serve our neighbors. 
One of the ways that I have been reflecting on this this week is I realized as I was leafing through my prayer journal that I've lived in my neighborhood for a little over two months now and I hadn't yet sat down and prayed for the salvation of my neighbors, of the people living around me. And in preparation for this sermon, that's something I wrote in my prayer journal, to keep them in mind, to keep being opportunistic, to see the ways that God is calling me to show love for the neighbors around me. You see, because God writes your name in the book of life, he gives you the gift of his son for eternity so that you can share that gift with the people that you interact with every single day. Your name is written in the book of life. The writing on the wall doesn't apply to you anymore. So let's spend our lives faithfully and opportunistically showing others the writing on the cross, God's divine eraser. Amen. Let's join together and pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for sending your son to the cross so that the writing on the cross would cancel out the writing on the wall And you would write our names in the book of life. Lord, as we gather together, we ask that you would heal the sick and bring comfort to those experiencing illness and injury, especially Pastor Roberts. As we continue to suffer with COVID and flu, help those who are struggling and protect us from serious illness. Lord, give resurrection, hope, courage, comfort, and confidence to those mourning the death of their loved ones. Guide and direct our governmental leaders Protect and defend our military along with police, firefighters, and emergency workers. And hear our prayer for the leaders of our churches, Synod, the LCMS, and give them faithfulness to their callings. Make them opportunistic to see the ways they might expand your kingdom. And finally, build us up to be faithful and opportunistic so that we could point others to the writing on the, to re- the, writing on the cross that they would be written in the book. All this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand up and sing. so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are his, the rivers are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so great, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. The mountains are His, the rivers are His, the stars are His handiwork too. My God is so great. So strong and so mighty, there's nothing my God cannot do. Receive this blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now I'm going to invite the kids to come forward and help us with this last song. Oh, look at that one. Yeah, there you go.
Was I mic'd the whole time? What? Was I mic'd the whole time? You were mic'd the whole time. So your, your mic wasn't, there wasn't sound on the live stream. But on here, we could do great. Okay. and we're going to spend a few minutes talking about our lesson today. So if you want to go ahead and have a seat. my friends. I brought with me 
some very special things today. And I want to see if you guys know what these are. Do you guys know what these are? What about these? Plates and cups. Raise your hand if you've ever used a plate or a cup before. Wonderful. Great job, parents. I feel like that is a success already. So we have some plates and cups. Do you notice I have some different kinds here? Right? You see, you see this one? What's, what's different about this plate? Paper. It's paper. You know what I love about this plate? What do you do with it when you're done? You throw it away, right? It's made for a single use, right? You're like, yes, I don't have to do the dishes. This is wonderful. Do you guys see this one? What about this? Yeah, uh, my son. It's like, that is my Paw Patrol plate right there. Paw Patrol plate right here. When would you use this kind of plate? Every day, right? Breakfast, lunch, dinner, when you're feeding the kids, right? It's not, if you drop it, it's not going to break. Yes, guess where I can put this one? In the dishwasher, right? Run it in the dishwasher. It's wonderful. Now this one. Check this out. These, the kids are like, this is glass. It's better than glass. Do you know what this is? It's china. Raise your hand if you've ever eaten off china before. Wow. Parents, that's good. This, do you see this around the edge right here? Do you know what this is? Silver, it's a very special metal, right? Silver platinum, do you know what I can't do with this? I cannot put it in the microwave. I also, I cannot put it in the dishwasher, all right? So this plate, do you, when do you think I would use this plate? <laughs> the sink. Yeah, on a very special occasion, right? Right? When you use china, it's a very special occasion. Kind of the same thing, check about cups, right? What are these? Yeah, styrofoam, paper, I use it, I throw it away. This one, you see your moms and dads use this how often? Coffee. Almost every day, right? This one also goes in the dishwasher. Now check this out. You see this? Do you know what this is? It's, it is pottery, right? This is a chalice, all right? This is a very, very special cup, all right? Very special cup. This is actually Pastor Sam's. We would use this on very special occasions, okay? It's, it's pottery. It's ceramic, okay? This, if you dropped it, what would happen? It would break. That would, be, that would be bad. Well, so just like there are kind of different plates, different cups, different occasions, today we learned about there is this feast, okay? And the king was using... Cups and plates. Do you know what kind of cups and plates? Do you think he was using this kind or this kind? Special? He was using, listen to this, he was using not only special china, but something kind of like this. The cups and the plates were supposed to be used in God's temple. They were that special. They were set apart to be used in the temple. And the king said, you know what? I don't care. I'm having a feast. Bring it out. So he took all of the special cups and all the special plates that they were supposed to use for in God's temple, and they had a feast. And this is what's happening. If you remember, it's been a long time, so we're learning about Daniel. Can you say the name Daniel? Daniel. And Daniel, something very special happens. We're going to put this picture back up on the screen. He was faithful, right? If you remember Daniel, he was faithful, just like Pastor Sam reminded us. He brought him in, the king brought him into the palace. Daniel said, I'm going to be faithful to God. And now something is happening at this feast where they're using God's plates and cups. And I want to know what happened. So talk about it with your family. See if we can come up with a summary of our Bible lesson today.
he figure out this mysterious message? How did the king figure out what those weird words meant? Do you know? Daniel. Yeah, Daniel interpreted it for him, right? So Daniel, if you remember, he was brought in the kingdom. Someone said, hey, wait a second. Let's ask this guy, Daniel. And so Daniel came in and said, all right, this message is from God. This is what God is telling you. And so Daniel used his gifts to serve God, right? To tell the king, to tell the people, hey, here's God's message for you. And guess what? Today I have, I have a secret message for all of you. So you should have received a little card. Can you hold up your little white cards? All right, do you see where that gray part is? There underneath that gray is a secret message for you. So you have to scratch it off. You can use your fingernails, you can ask moms and dads for a tool, you can use the blunt edge of your pen. Scratch it off, see if you can figure out what your secret message is. Moms and dads, if you have coins, Scratch it off and see what your secret message is. When you figured out the message, raise your hand. If you can see your message. You guys got it? You got the message? What's it say? I saw your hand first. Uh, you know what it says? I can serve God. I can serve God. I, I can serve God. Is that what your message says too? Yeah. Yeah. So Daniel was able to serve God using his gifts by decoding a secret message. And I had a little secret message for you, but it's the same thing. You can serve God. Just like we saw Daniel be able to use the gifts to tell people about what God has done, you can do that. God has made you so special. He has put you in a certain place for a reason, right? Like Pastor Sam was saying, he put you around like your neighbors, he put you around your friends at school. He put you in your job. He put you with this. You have, parents, you have the kids you have for a reason. And God wants you to serve him, to share his message. So I want you guys to think about that. How can you, being who you are, who God has made you, awaken the hearts around you to what God wants for us to know? How can you serve God to show Jesus' love with the people that he's placed around you? On your card, you should have a pen. Write that down. Think about it. Talk about it with your families. What does it look like for you to serve God and to share his good news to awaken the hearts of every generation to his power? All right, my friends, I think each every and every one of these cards is going to look a little different because the way I serve my neighbor is going to be very different from the way that Wade serves his neighbor, right? The way that you do something, the way that you share God's wonderful message is going to be so different from everyone else in this room. And I'm so excited to see how God is con going to continue to change our community, to continue to spread his love and his word and his power as we live through him 
serving our neighbor. So will you guys fold your hands and bow your heads and your hearts and let's talk to him before we go. Awesome God, we thank you so much for your word to us. Forgive us for the times that we've been prideful. Help us to follow the model of Jesus, who was our perfect and humble king. We're so thankful for his sacrifice on our behalf so that we can be close to you. Help us faithfully serve you so that others may know of your great power and love. And it's in Jesus' name we pray and all God's people said, amen. amen. All right, Pastor Sam, do you have any announcements for us? I have one really important announcement. So keep checking your email this week. Because you will hear about February 5th. That's a very important date, February 5th. We're going to have a voters meeting. The, the Congregation of St. Luke's has gone through this kind of long process of recommending a pastor to call for the senior, for the senior pastor position. Pastor Arp's going to stick around, but he's not going to be in that role anymore. So February 5th, we are going to vote to accept Pastor Tig as that senior pastor to extend a call to him. And so make sure to be here. That's a really important day for as many people as possible who are members of this congregation to show up and vote. At noon, right? At noon. And it's going to yes. be in here? I don't know. We'll, we'll let you Probably know. Probably in right here. Now. Check All your right. email. Yes. The other thing that I have for you is so don't forget, if you have pens in the back, Miss Paula will collect those. She also has your cards for you. Moms, if you are a mom of a preschooler and you want to join us for Mops, we're meeting this Wednesday in the youth room, this Wednesday at 1030. So we have Mops on Wednesday. And then if you have a kindergartner, we have a kindergarten milestone class coming up. It's really fun. It's a parent class. It's nice to meet with other parents. And we talk about how can we help our kids learn to serve others. So that's coming up on January 25th. So sign up for that. Um, Mops is coming. And then mark your calendar for February 5th. Have a wonderful week in the Lord serving your neighbor. Have a blessed week.